been with uh, TED and TED Summit, I think, from the inspect inception, and I think it has been a great uh, journey. And um, just to kind of give you a little bit of background about Zenith Mobile, uh, we've been in the, in the business for almost 12 years, and we have kind of seen the, the evolution of how things have been moving from messaging and then kind of uh, going into the internet and kind of uh, coming back again and going through all the cycles. And today, I thought, you know, I'll talk to you about something which is very interesting for us because we've been working in, with Asian operators uh, in the area of messaging, especially with the telco side. So we actually very early stage, you know, the service delivery platforms, we started opening up APIs, but our real strength is on how to make it simple for non-developers to be able to develop services. So that's how actually we started with the uh, Asiata Group, and we actually grew that business uh, very much in, in the way that they actually won uh, at Mobile World Congress one of the awards for being the most innovative platform, and this was maybe about four years back. Since then, we have actually moved from telecom also into the enterprise side. So, and we, we have some very interesting uh, learnings that we have had, and then we, I want to kind of talk about that with you today and maybe have a discussion on that and where we see what we call the enterprise CPaaS, you know, what is happening and, you know, what the landscape. But uh, before that, I'd like to maybe talk a little bit about what we call the evolution of communication in that from our standpoint. So we had, like, discrete communication very early stage. You had your phones, you had, you know, your laptops, you communicated, you know, very, very much discrete. Then from there, we actually moved into mixed communications, what we call where you had a phone, you had still, you had your Skype and your voice and your maybe pages, you had multiple devices that you had. From that, we actually all went into what we call unified communication, which was the first part of EC pass, uh, sorry, C pass, where you had APIs and you were able to kind of communicate through them and, and, you know, share information. Then we call about what we call converged communication. This is what we will talk about today a little bit more in detail. And there we actually started seeing how, you know, communication with CPAS, what we call CPAS 2.0, where API started coming in. So if you really look at what was C CPAS uh, 2.0, where we actually start seeing video, email, messaging, voice, social media, all that started kind of coming together. Then we had APIs and then the enterprises were able to kind of communicate through this and was able to kind of consume services. But what happened is that, you know, you, do you really think that we call converged communication, whether it's, you know, has communication really converged? I think if you look at from the time that we started, and to today, so you get all different new ways of communicating, whether it's from Slack, whether, you know, uh, whether it's your, you know, IMs, whether it's, you know, Facebook IM, or whether it's your WhatsApp to Viber to all that started. And you actually started kind of going out again rather than really converging. So converging from a point of view, from an enterprise point of view. You know, from a, so I'm actually looking at this from a businesses and from enterprise. That's where we actually spend a lot of our time, because if you go and start talking with, uh, whether from any department, from marketing to sales to uh, anybody, you talk about that they have so many different mechanisms now to communicate and to be able to get their message out, and how do you kind of really bring all that? And that's where we, in our opinion, that's where the next big opportunity is going to lie in this. So we, then we looked at it in two different ways. Okay, what are the building blocks for converged communication? So we came with this thing, okay, you need to have a technical unification and you need to have a service unification we talked about. So, and we said, okay, why communication hasn't converged? So in our opinion, we feel that there are some roadblocks. So especially we thought, you know, there are, there are three roadblocks to really get communications to converge. And what are they? So big, number one, is the dependency on IT. Though we have actually moved a lot outside to be, be able to do our own communication, we still, as an organization, as enterprises, you have a lot of, still a lot of dependency with IT. 
we thought once we start moving to the cloud, you know, we can actually be independent. We thought that we can now go and actually do your own thing without the, you know, the blessings of the IT. But if you really look at what has happened is when you start kind of using all these different communication mechanisms, bringing your own devices to office, in, to your companies, you still need to work with IT. Then also we, we saw that there's incomplete engagement. What does that mean? You know, there's so much communication going on, but as an organization, are you really be able to kind of measure it, monitor it, track it, be able to kind of find what's really going on? And the, and the third is imprecise insights. There's so much of data, but are we really making use of that data to make real decisions? So that's I kind of a goal, that's where we thought you know these were the real barriers for you know, really becoming a converged communication platform. So to this, what's the, what, why, let's go through each of these, you know, like the IT dependency. So if you, if you really think about, you know, you want to kind of uh, automate business operations. For example, that, you know, you think that, okay, I want to uh, um, send, you know, as a bank, I want to send uh, some reminders about your, you know, payment reminders, but you know, you, a lot of the time you only send your payment reminders, but that's only one way. Does that really kind of a click, click on this, go and, you know, pay it right now, or whether you can go and schedule your payments, you know, does that whole thing happens? You know, very rarely that happens. Extended services. Say that you are in customer service and you are kind of listening to somebody on something, but you need now as an agent, I want to kind of transfer this to a more technical person be able to you know, really solve the issue of my customer. Can you do that? Most of the time you can't. You can't really have a frictionless way of passing that information to somebody to be able to see that whole history of what happened and being able to address that. So that's why we say extended uh, you know, uh, services. Then con convert ideas into you know, real innovation. What does that mean? You know, say that you are in marketing, you are in the marketing department, you want to run certain campaigns through multiple channels. You want to run it through your, you know, to targeting the millennials, maybe the Facebook, the uh, Snapchat and all that, and then you want to use your email and some of your text messaging. Can these be run without really being, you know, outside your scope of the work that you're doing? So a lot of this really kind of a creates an environment where you are not really being able to kind of, a, you know, bring that the power of communication together. Now let's look at imprecise insights. So here we talk about unable to quantify the business value of interactions. So there are so much of interactions going on, but are you able to measure it? Are you be able to kind of uh, look at and put your finger and say, okay, this one had this kind of ROI for me. Thousands of conversations happening, but few results oriented because we are in a world of kind of a machine gun approach. We send things out and just hope and pray that somebody kind of will be able to look at that. Can you bring all that kind of stuff together through this converged communication? And low response rate due to lack of awareness or customer ch channel prioritization. So which channels are working better for me? Is there a way that we can measure? Not really. So coming back on the in, uh, imprecise insights, here we are talking about you know, you have a lot of data that you have collected, but am I be able to make decisions looking at that and say, oh, you know, this really worked very well. So I have past data so that I, I can really build my future campaigns on that. Difficult to extract, you know, like emotional intelligence or emotions, you know. For example, think about that, you know, you are running an insight survey on an HR department. You want to see the the way they respond, you want to see what's that whole empathy, whole that emotion, can that be captured so as from an HR can now create programs and activities, initiatives on that. So they, these are all possible, but at the moment it's because this, there's so much of uh, disparity ways of communication that you really are not being able to look at that. And last but not least, you know, like, you know, there are a lot of new technologies, latest technologies that people are playing around with, with this virtual reality, augmented reality. Are we bringing that information and that data and looking again, can that be used for real benefit of an organization or enterprise? So that's what we feel that the, the whole 
barriers that are really creating to create a converged communication. So what's the answer? So we thought, we looked at this very carefully because we've been working with enterprises a lot. We said the one way of kind of a bringing all that, this is what we call CPAS. And we said, okay, we will create an enterprise CPAS where we will bring all that stuff through wizards and templates and really kind of a take you through a, a journey. So if you look at an enterprise, it could be an HR department, it could be a marketing, it could be customer service, product support, finance, or even business, small business users. Now, with an easy pass platform, you are able to kind of bring a lot of the things I, that spoke before together. And that's where we see the communication is coming into convergence. Let me run through a very simple recruitment life cycle. What, what I call the new ways of recruiting. And uh, it's, it's geared from, you know, you are starting as a stranger, you actually start able to kind of uh, use different channels to send your messaging, not only through message boards, but also through um, Facebook, through, you know, uh, Snapchat, to all that, and then a visitor kind of looks at that and becomes inward, interested, they get converted, and then they start as an applicant. You know, you actually start, uh, and all this information that you're having from multiple channels, you're actually bringing into one portal. So from an applicant, you're actually moving into collaboration, you know, you start asking, they see what's the culture of, of the company, where they, they have, you know, conversations going on, and they kind of uh, become interested and in becoming a prospect for you as an applicant. Then what do you do from there? You actually go into connect, and then you bring that person, you do the interviews, and bring that person online, and you, the person becomes an employee. So this simple case study, what I showed you from an HR department, you can think the same thing that you can look at other different, different departments. Let's see, we actually did a small video where, you know, internally we were kind of uh, looking at that. How does this work? So you're looking to kind of uh, recruit somebody on this and then you actually, as an HR manager, you are creating the job profile sends it through multiple messaging. We could be one could be Facebook, one could be uh, WhatsApp, one could be uh, Snapchat. The stranger they take a look at it, they find oh this is interesting for me. I start kind of applying for that. And while you are doing that, you are communicating with your prospective candidates. You know this could be for the shortlisted teams. You receive your resumes. You go through the shortlisting, you actually create that, and this is all created through a wizard-based platform that we talked about before. And then you can actually schedule a um, phone screen, could be a video conference, send reminders, do the you know, interviews, and then connect with them, do the onboarding process, bring them out, and that becomes a candidate, becomes a seamless and strong relation with shareholders. So that's that's what is you know what we talk about EC pass, you know, that's what we feel that you know this is going to be the next um, new kind of a, not a revolution, but that'll start helping your own organizations to be able to build a converged communication platform. And we are working with enterprises on this. We are actually planning to uh, launch this in time to come and we have a, a, a cool white paper that we have if anybody is interested in kind of downloading that and it's all about just purely on what we see our world from an enterprise CPAS. Thank you.